All right, guys, uh, we're getting to the point where we really need to elaborate on spotting. Um, we've noticed that a lot of people really don't know how to spot. We have a lot of novice lifters coming in, so it's it's probably a good idea you guys learn how to spot. The One of the first rules that I really don't have on here is that if you don't know how to spot, don't spot. You'll hear me say that all the time in class. Um, if you think you may not know how to spot, don't spot. Only get people that know how to spot. As a spotter, you are making sure that you are keeping the lifter safe. You have a personal responsibility to keep that lifter safe. Um, we'll go over lifter responsibilities later, uh, but remember, it's the safety is kind of the first and foremost. It's kind of the Hippocratic Oath. It's do no harm. First, do no harm. So make sure that you really understand uh, how, to, how to spot before you actually take on that challenge. Um, two, communicate. Communication is probably the main point of being a spotter. Uh, you want to make sure before you approach the lifter, you establish a rep range, okay? Uh, I should know if Carl's back squatting that he's going to go for a three or a one or a five. If you don't know, you don't know when their tendency to fail might be. Uh, the second thing is an exit strategy. You should know how they tend to fail if they do fail. Um, and the lifter, of course, should know of that as well. Um, establishing a safe word, understanding if the lifter says take it, uh, a grunt doesn't necessarily mean that they want you to take the bar, okay? So understanding how they may fail uh, and also what they're gonna say when they want you to take it. And it's usually a pretty natural thing if somebody's gonna tell you to take the bar. Uh, cues, do they want cues? Some lifters may not want cues in the first place. Uh, so telling them chest up or knees out may not be a welcome cue when they're really trying to focus and it may throw them off their track. So make sure you establish if and when they do want cues uh, because they may want you to tell them to stand up. So uh, tendencies of the lifter, uh, hey, my knees tend to come in a little bit, just remind me of that, or uh, my chest tends to drop. You have to understand the tendencies of the lifter to understand as well the way they might fail. If their chest tends to drop, you may want to uh, prepare for that. You may have to lean over the lifter a little bit more and establish a different base. Um, the encouragement also, just you know, screaming, yelling. Some lifters prefer just screaming and yelling and all that kind of stuff. Um, make sure it's, it's solid encouragement on what the lifter wants. Um, it, personally for me, I hate encouragement. I don't want you to scream at me, it's throwing me off my game. So some people like that, some people don't. So make sure that you really, really, you know, uh, establish that before you get into the lift, okay? You don't just run in and my job is to take the bar, okay? Uh, be aware and prepare for anything, okay? Uh, if a lifter's going for a higher rep range, you can back off the bar a little bit. You're watching bar speed, basically. Bar speed and technique, and if you don't know what good bar speed looks like or technique looks like, then you need to rehash that before you get into spotting, okay? So being aware because anything can happen, uh, the clip could be loose on one side and the plate should get could, could start to slide off. Then you might have to yank the bar or throw the bar over. There's a lot of things that can happen and I've seen just about all of them happen. Um, so being aware of preparing for anything. Uh, being aware means your eyes are on the bar the entire time. If that bar slows down, that means approach the bar a little bit more. If it's, if it's fast and the reps look good, you don't need to be right on that bar. Okay, uh, and these are all different depending on, you know, if they're doing a high rep range, you can back off the bar. If they're doing a rep max, a five, a three, a one, uh, and they're going for something realistic, then, you know, that you may have to stay a little close to the bar. Remember, eyes on the bar, stay close to the bar if it's a pretty aggressive lift. Uh, don't touch the bar unless it's necessary, okay? In most competitive settings, if you touch a bar, the lift is done, the lift is over with. If you don't care if it's all pinkies, the lift has become a no lift because you have touched the bar for that person, okay? Uh, now, one of the worst things you can do if you're side spotting, there's one person on one side, one person on the other side, is have one person lift up and then the other person not lift up on this. Once again, communication with multiple uh, types and variations of spotting are, are, is key as well. Also, the same thing if somebody's grinding a rep out and somebody grabs the bar and finishes it out, uh, that's also something that's you know pretty frowned upon if somebody is about to get a new one at max. So uh, make sure that you communicate, you keep the lifter safe, uh, you have to be aware the entire time. You are performing the lift with that athlete and do not touch the bar unless it is necessary. Okay? You good. All right, next we're going to go over the lifter's job, okay? Uh, we went over the spotter's job, now we're going to go over the lifter's job. One, if you can't get the weight back off. If you think you may not get the weight, it's a different thing than if you 
are attempting a weight that's very unrealistic. Don't let pride take over because that's when injuries occur, okay? Uh, the second thing is a technically sound lift versus getting it up any way possible. You guys are training in here. Most of you are not competing year round or at least on a pretty regular basis. If you have no competition you're training for, then you are training in here all the time, okay? Uh, make sure that you err on the side of everything being a technically sound lift. There are, there's a technical max and there's a strength max, and those two are different things. Uh, if it starts to get ugly, cut it off and know when to back off. These two kind of tie into each other. Um, so next thing is knowing your limits and being responsible. As a lifter, you should know your limits. You should know all of your numbers, and if you don't, you should err on the safe side, and you should be responsible because if you ditch that bar, you may hurt the spotter. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go off right on uh, there. So make sure that you know your limits. You're not attempting a 30% PR just because you feel good that day. Or you're not trying an extra rep even though you're not going not gonna to get it. Uh, so just, just understand your limits, be realistic, and then make sure that you communicate. Everything that the spotter communicates to you you should make sure you communicate back. If they miss something, it's your job to tell them. You need to make sure you establish a rapport with them beforehand. Um, you know, you're responsible for the spotter as well as the spotter is responsible for you. If you are not being responsible and you are, are you know, performing a lift that you know you're gonna fail, um, you know, just, just make sure that you stay within that technically sound range, okay? Uh, three fail rule. Uh, I like this rule, it's a good general rule of thumb. Uh, if you fail once, determine if it was a strength matter, were you just not strong enough to get it, or was it a technical matter. The only time that you can attempt it a second time is if you feel you can remedy one or the other. If you feel like you can fix the technical cue that caused you to fail that, then you move on to the second rep. Okay, second rep, if you wind up failing that one, then you have to determine was it strength, was it technique, the only time you are allowed a third one is if the second one was closer and if you feel like you can remedy that issue and it has to be pretty darn close to finish. More often than not, if you fail a second one, you're probably not going to get the third one, especially when it comes to squatting and what have you. So don't grind your head into the ground, just go after it and then just move on to the next lift. Okay. Uh, being receptive to a coach or a senior athlete. Listen to cues. If they tell you to stop, stop. If they tell you to quit failing, uh, you know, we're not practicing failing lifts, we're practicing making lifts. So make sure that you are receptive to the cues, you're receptive to, uh, you know, the fact that they told you to stop or they want you to move back and work on technique, okay? Again, we're working on making lifts, not failing lifts, okay? Uh, if you sit there and you had five successful lifts, but then you try a max 10 different times, you are kind of waiting on the side and really training that technical flaw that's causing you to fail. So just keep that in mind. You gotta be receptive to people who've been training a lot longer than you, okay? All right, now we're gonna go over setup. So let's talk about context. The setup's gonna be a little different depending on the context of lift. 90% of the time, we're talking about the back squat. 10% of the time, you know, we also spot on the bench as well. Um, context of the lift and the spotting method as well. Uh, there are multiple ways to spot. There's the two side spotter method, or at least one on each side of the barbell. There's the arms underneath method, and there's also grabbing the barbell or being responsible for hitching the barbell back. We don't prefer the arms underneath, and we'll explain that later. Um, that is for more advanced athletes that really know each other and that have been training with each other for a while. Uh, that's not for novice lifters that don't know each other and then don't know how to lift, or at least finish a lift. Uh, most novice lifters will tend to kick the bar off their back, which will then throw it into the crook of your arm and sending you flying back, which I've seen before. Uh, so context of the lift matters. So, so make sure that you understand what we're doing and, and kind of what we're setting up for. That'll determine everything else. So your stance. Uh, when you're stepping, and you can't really see my feet from here, but you're gonna choose a wide stance, something nice and aggressive, something you've gotta stagger your feet with as well. Uh, make sure your knees are driven out. You're performing the lift for them, so make sure you're in an athletic position. Your toes aren't turned out, your knees aren't dropping. You may have to support a relatively heavy weight, so make sure you drive the knees out, 
tight core. Stomach tight, butt tight, nice and aggressive, shoulders back and down. Set up like you are setting up, like you are setting up for that lift, okay? So make sure everything's tight. If somebody tried to push you, they shouldn't be able to move you back and forth. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you have a nice tight setup. Uh, hand placement. Some people squat a little wider, some people squat a little narrower with their hands. Same thing with bench, narrow or wide. Make sure that you move your hands around. You also communicate that with the lifter where you're going to be putting your hands. Uh, grip, typically what you're gonna do is kind of the uh, switch grip. You're gonna snatch on with the switch grip. It's gonna make it a little bit more secure grabbing it off their back. It also depends on what that lifter is lifting in relation to what your max is. Um, if that lifter is lifting my one rep max, I'm definitely going to hold a switch grip and I'm really going to yank that bar off his back. So it just depends on, on a lot of different factors. So uh, distance from the lifter. I've seen it very often where the lifter will tend to throw their hips back during a squat and you have to make sure as the spotter you don't let them bump their hips into you. Uh, that can really mess up their lift in short order. So make sure that your distance from the lifter, you're far enough away to keep an athletic stance uh, and you have to move around them as they're going. And you have to make sure that as they're heading down that you keep an athletic enough stance that you can pull the bar off of them, okay? So make sure that your distance from the lifter is close enough that you can be very aware of the speed, uh, but not so close that you're gonna bump them with their hips. So uh, chalk, chalk your hands up, okay? You don't want the bar slipping out of your hands. You wanna make sure you have a nice tight bite on that because again, uh, the lifter may wind up throwing it back. So uh, you always want to make sure you chalk up your hands. Uh, another thing is the, is the lifter. If the person does pull the bar off your back and the spotter is behind you holding it, get out of the way. And this is in the context of the squat, not the bench press, but you want to make sure you get out of the way. Don't just sit on the ground, okay? Uh, you also need to establish whether you're going to be finishing the lift with the person's support, or if you're going to be kicking the bar back. There's a couple different ways and you can wind up helping that lifter up. Once again, helping the lifter finish, either under the arms or grabbing hold of the bar, and then finishing is a little bit more of an advanced method. Um, and you have to make sure that uh, you're well aware of what's going to happen. And it all comes down to communication, okay?